In this video, we will discuss the pathogenesis of neoplasia of cervix. So, neoplasia of cervix can be in form of cervical carcinoma or its precursor lien, data known as cervical dysplasia, SIL or squamous intraepithelial lien or CIN, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. We will discuss the pathogenesis of these lesions. So, the first point in the pathogenesis of this carcinoma of the cervix is the concept of transformation zone. Remember that the development of transformation zone is itself a normal phenomenon, but this transformation zone plays a very important role in the pathogenesis of cervical cancer or cervical neoplasia. So firstly, we will have to understand this. So you can see that this is a diagram of cervix. This part of cervix is called endocervix. This is connected above to the uterus. And this part of the cervix below is called ectocervix and this is connected to the vagina. So endocervix is the part that is connected to the uterus and ectocervix is the part that is connected to vagina. Now you can see that the endocervix just like the uterus is lined by columnar epithelial cells while this ectocervix like the vagina is lined by squamous epithelial cells and the area of the female genital tract where there is junction of these columnar and these squamous cells is there is called squamocolumnar junction squamocolumnar junction now the important point to understand is that during the development of female what happens that this squamocolumnar junction is present at the level of cervical os cervical os or cervical opening that is at the level of endocervix and ectocervix junction so between endocervix and ectocervix there is this squamocolumnar junction and it is present at the level of cervical opening now what happens that during the puberty there is a great upsurge of reproductive hormones like estrogen and this estrogen causes proliferation of these columnar epithelial cells. So this squamocolumnar junction which was initially present here at the level of cervical os advances further along the ectocervix and this new squamocolumnar junction is at the point slightly at a greater distance from the usual. So this squamocolumnar junction is present at the level of ectocervix halfway along the ectocervix. Now the next important event is that after the woman develops the age of puberty then with each passing year these columnar cells that are present at the level of ectocervix undergo metaplasia and transform into the squamous cells. You can see these columnar cells which are present here have again been transformed into these squamous cells. Now this development of metaplastic squamous cells is called transformation and this area where this transformation happens is called transformation zone. You can see that during the development, the cells lining here were the squamous cells and now again these cells lining here are the squamous cells but the difference is that those squamous cells were original squamous cells but these squamous cells have developed as a result of metaplasia from these columnar cells. So this is the concept of transformation zone. So let me summarize. Transformation zone is the area of ectocervix where the columnar cells transform or undergo metaplasia into these squamous cells. So again the squamocolumnar junction has moved at the level of cervical opening. But it was not always like this. There was a transformation in achieving this squamocolumnar junction back to its original level that was present during the development. So this is the transformation zone. Now the first important step in the development of neoplasia of the cervix or cervical dysplasia is exposure to human papilloma virus. And the concept of transformative zone was important because the human papilloma virus has tropism for transformative zone. So this human papilloma virus likes to infect the area of transformation zone. Now as we have discussed the exposure of human papilloma virus, we need to discuss the risk factors of human papilloma virus exposure that are ultimately the risk factors of cervical neoplasia. So the first important risk factor is early age at first sexual intercourse. So you know that human papilloma virus is a sexually transmitted organism. So in consistent with this, the risk factor is early age at first sexual contact and multiple sexual partners. Both of these increase the risk of the transmission of this sexually transmitted organism. And the third important point that is specific to the development of neoplasia is high risk HPV strains. Let us discuss this further. So human papilloma virus exposure can be either to high risk human papilloma virus strains that are 16 and 18 or low risk human papilloma virus strains that are 6 and 11. Remember that these 6 and 11 are low risk strains and do not result in neoplasia rather they result in condylomas, condylomas acuminata. 
but these 16 and 18 variants of human papilloma virus do result in the neoplasias. So remember these high risk human papilloma virus strains. Now what do these high risk human papilloma virus strains do? These high risk strains infect the transformative zone of the cer cervix and they express two proteins that are E6 and E7. This protein E6 causes inhibition of P53 and this protein E7 causes inhibition of retinoblastoma protein. Both these P53 and RB are tumor suppressor genes and when human papilloma virus has resulted in the inhibition of these two tumor suppressor genes, what happens is that the cells of transformative zone start to proliferate rapidly. So there is active proliferation of squamous epithelial cells of the transformation zone. Now you know that the normal squamous cells do not proliferate at a very high pace but these cells that are being infected with this human papilloma virus have started to proliferate at a very high pace and when a viral infected cell starts to proliferate at a very high rate it results in a faster replication of viruses. So this is a strategy of this human papilloma virus to proliferate itself at a very fast rate. In other words, this human papilloma virus is using the machinery of host cells of transformative zone to replicate itself faster. Now the next important step is the progression of this human papilloma virus infected proliferating cells to precancerous and cancerous lien. So what happens is that those cells that are being infected by human papilloma virus start to proliferate rapidly and you know that when the cells start to proliferate rapidly there is chances of some genetic aberrations. So some of the, these infected cells transform into low grade squamous intraepithelial lien. Out of this some of these cells transform into high grade squamous intraepithelial lien then if high grade squamous intraepithelial lien is not treated it ultimately results in invasive cancer and this invasive cancer can ultimately metastasize. So this is the brief pathogenesis of cervical neoplasia. In the next video we will discuss this low grade squamous intraepithelial lien, high grade squamous intraepithelial lien and this invasive cancers in detail. But this is was all about the pathogenesis. Remember the important points, remember the concept of transformation zone, remember that this cervical neoplasia is due to the exposure to human papilloma virus. And also remember that these human papilloma virus strains release E6 and E7 proteins that inhibit these tumor suppressor genes resulting in the rapid proliferation of these epithelial cells as well as these viruses. And ultimately these proliferating epithelial cells of transformative zone can develop into the cervical dysplasia, cervical precancerous lesions and invasive carcinoma. So this is the pathogenesis.